I don't date photographers. Yeah. You keep terrible hours. You drink too much. And you're crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's some bad stuff too. Last week, Tim Hetherington, the conflict photographer who co-directed the Oscar-nominated documentary Restrepo, was killed while on assignment in Libya. I interviewed Hetherington a few months ago and found him to be a very pleasant, thoughtful, mild-mannered guy. So what makes someone like that, or really any conflict photographer, want to visit the world's most dangerous hellholes with only a camera for protection? That motivation and its consequences are explored in The Bang Bang Club, which is based on the true story of four South African photographers who risked their lives to capture the civil war raging in the townships before South Africa's first free elections in the early 90s. Ryan Philippi plays freelance photographer Greg Marinovich, who falls in with the trio who would eventually be called The Bang Bang Club for the way they bravely, or maybe recklessly, faced bullets while shooting back with film. Taylor Kitsch is Kevin Carter, the club's charismatic but erratic wild child, with Niels van Jarlsveld as Joao Silva, known for his coolness under fire. Frank Rautenbach plays Ken Oosterbrecht, the group's most experienced photographer and putative leader, and Malin Ackerman plays Robin Comley, the photo editor who hired the club and fought for their pictures to be published. So are these shutterbugs adrenaline junkies, journalists, artists, or simply guys with a death wish? As the film follows the lives of the men with and without their cameras, we see that there are no easy answers. The club's talent, daring, and hard partying earns them rock star status with all the requisite perks, but the film never strays far from the inevitable consequences of the group's work and the strain it puts on their relationships. Perhaps the biggest danger is the damage done to the men's psyches from putting themselves and their lenses inches away from horrific brutality and anguish. One African character accuses the group, who are all white, of being unwitting propaganda tools, supplying proof that Africans are too savage to govern themselves. Maybe the Bang Bang Club is simply a cute name for a bunch of vampire paparazzi who require human suffering for sustenance and do nothing to stop it. This possibility weighs heaviest on Carter, who's haunted by and eventually succumbs to the guilt he feels for capturing a heartbreaking image in the Sudan that won him a Pulitzer. All of the people that say that it's our job to sit there and watch people die. Right. Yet the pain can have its rewards, as in one scene where Marinovich swings from the trauma of witnessing a murder to elation that his photo of it is being reprinted around the world. While Philippi's acting has never been accused of setting the world on fire, he handles his South African accent well, and his lower-key approach works since he's the newcomer learning the ropes in what is essentially an ensemble film. Kitsch, who you may know from Friday Night Lights, is particularly good as the troubled Carter, as are the African actors who give voice to the photo's subjects. Writer-director Steve Silver does an excellent job recreating the chaotic settings of the club's famous photos, often filming with hundreds of extras in the same Soweto slums where the original images were taken. The film could have done more to explain the political situation, where the white government was actually stoking tribal rivalries and arming one of the sides. But this didn't bother me since the Bang Bang Club is about the photographers, whose goal is to get the best shots, not necessarily to reveal the bigger picture. So if you want an in-depth examination of post-apartheid South Africa, this probably isn't what you're looking for. Regardless of what motivates conflict photographers like Tim Hetherington, they risk their lives to show the world the horrors of war, and the Bang Bang Club does a great job of showing the highs, lows, camaraderie, and risks of doing that important work, which is why I gave it a rating of 8. This movie is in limited release, but it's definitely worth checking out, and it's available on demand, so you can watch it in the comfort and safety of your own home. I'm Jonathan Kim for What the Flick.